we just need this come from people and neighbors and we share whatever we had. Dan kerjasama semua Penduduk-penduduk kampung lah Tanpa membayar Pembur ada Yedeno Anggar nanti Tanjam bahar leh nanti Seranggut tu ke nanti Apa nanti Yedeno nanti Pala putta yang lain Kalai mula putta yang lain Mati itu The only pastime perhaps Is to sit down On a very short wooden stool And listen to storytellers Before you close your eyes You can still hear it Oral history, it brings out that emotions, that emotional experience, because it's really getting them to journey back into the past. It was started in 1979, and it was the late Defence Minister, Dr Goh King Sui, who mooted the idea. And I think the whole intent was to capture and to interview the stories of individuals who have contributed to the development of Singapore as a nation. Listening as an oral history interview will requires you to listen with empathy. You want to enter into their world. When Singapore fell, and you mean when the Japanese got into Singapore, it was chaos. <laughs> One word to describe it, it was chaos. I remember. So it's more than just operating the machine. We prefer a life history approach to them telling the stories from birth to the present. So we encourage them to tell us their journey in life, the experiences that they've been through, and getting them sometimes to reflect on what these experiences mean to them. And I'm really happy, uh, you know, to have spent this time with you because I think it has made, you have made me reflect a lot of stuff that I didn't. I didn't want to think about but that's good because I had to do that you know because that was the thing that was probably uh, troubling me the most difficult part is getting them to agree to let us capture these meaningful stories for future generations it takes a lot of convincing to get them to say yes to this interview um, usually they will go like um, why should I tell you my stories? Um, after all, we are stranger to them. Yeah. So when they did say yes, it feels almost like a very long courtship. <laughs> With oral history, you get to listen to the voices of the people from all walks of life. Not everyone can write a biography, but through oral history, both you and I can narrate our stories and um, share our experiences that makes us very unique. They really enjoy, you know, going out to tea dances, and uh, we were we were having good fun. They were having good fun those days, you know. I mean, we have over five thousand interviews and twenty-four thousand hours of recording in four main languages and dialects. We started out preserving the interviews in analog tapes. But now all these interviews are preserved in digital format. It is good that our very first interview conducted on 27th of December 1979 can still be heard loud and clear today. Lots of people and a lot of wailing and running, a lot of people who are crying. And we went in to see what's happening, to see what we can do. Street lights were on, you know, the street lights. That's about 3 a.m. the street lights were still. Every interview is important because each recording is unique. So we have to follow certain processes in order that all the interviews that are being recorded can be properly kept and preserved. We are also exploring the use of AI to auto-transcribe interviews. AI could help to reduce the time spent on transcriptions. For oral history interviews, we usually want to preserve the verbatim nature of the transcript. We don't really edit out grammatical errors or things like that. Sometimes when you listen to interviews, it's like uh, travelling back in time. Because they are so vividly described, it's almost like you're there with them. I, I'm in the finals and I'm leading. You still have Sikunalan's voice in my head. He talks about losing a race. And then he announced the results. And, and he says... I, I didn't feel sad or anything, you know, I felt 
okay. But listening to it, you can actually hear the disappointment and the sadness in his voice as well. So I think these moments when they are captured in audio alone makes for a more special kind of experience because you can actually hear the raw emotion in them. And I think when people listen to interviews like this, it provides for a more holistic view of the picture. Wow, and you sat down there, you know? Most of the time I listen for accuracy as well as content. I usually put together bite-sized content for social media as well as me watch. So these are easier for the public to digest. Okay, right. Yeah, he, he won and I was second. I, f- I felt quite happy about it. They say, wow, you know, you're so close and, and so on. So. We have actually expanded our services and we have reached out to our neighbours in Asia, in the region like Malaysia, China, the Philippines. We actually share with them our oral history methodology and we actually train the people in setting up their own oral history initiative, oral history projects. And we are actively involved in the International Oral History Association and their biannual conferences. We train volunteers from various communities so that they can conduct their oral history interviews. This enables us to capture rich diversity of community stories. It's like an invitation to to be teleported almost to, you know, that era. I think that that, that was fantastic. There are many dimensions to a story. The stories are definitely out there. It depends on how long you're willing to search for them. Reserve these recordings so that our future generation and learn from them. It makes me a much better person. Learning to listen, not just with the ear, but with the heart.